important for parents, caregivers, families, and friends to help kids realize this is not the school that they attended last year. Our first responsibility before we teach, before students can learn, they have to be safe. The start of the new school year is less than a month away for many districts and with positive COVID-19 cases surging here in Bear County, teachers, parents and students are wondering what the new normal will be for learning. In this case at TV Extra, you'll hear from a San Antonio teacher, a local doctor and a psychologist as they weigh in on the risk of reopening schools and the tough decisions parents and educators have to make right now. <laughs> We recognize that there's a variety of unique circumstances for different schools and different school districts. And so we've outlined a number of strategies that those schools, those administrators can use to accomplish this goal safely. The Texas Education Agency has released recommendations on how students will return to classrooms in the fall. Some of the guidelines include symptom screening for teachers, students, and visitors, avoiding mass gatherings like assemblies, and even wearing masks. Burbank High School teacher Luke Amplett says the TEA guidelines are not in line with what local health experts are recommending. It, like the, the ask the TEA is asking us to do is to pull off something that no one on earth has actually pulled off yet. You know, where we've seen schools successfully reopening in Europe, um, in places like New Zealand, in places like Vietnam and in China, we've seen very, very low levels of transmission and consistently decreasing levels of infection, decreasing numbers of deaths and hospitalizations, and a very different situation from the one that we find ourselves in right now. We want to learn in the classroom, so our schools, we want them open in the fall. President Donald Trump is pushing for schools across the country to open on schedule, and the CDC also releasing recommendations of what that will look like. So I'm a member of a coalition that's been working in the city for, uh, you know, eight weeks now on reopening guidelines. And so we've been grappling with different documents for a long time. The CDC's document, different union documents, a lot of studies that we've been looking into in research. And what TEA is asking of us doesn't seem to fit with that picture, as we understand it. Our recommendations are not requirements, and they're not meant to be prescriptive. We have lots of different options on how the schools can put it together. And we, we have come up with a blueprint for how we think we can safely open schools in the fall. And it's a really detailed framework for doing that work. Um, but it becomes increasingly difficult to pull that off if we keep seeing large amounts of community transmission, uh, very high rates of infection like we're having in Bear County and across Texas right now. You know, the people who've committed their lives to working with our youth um, in schools like the one that I work in have committed their lives to protecting youth and educating them. But we can't educate youth if people are getting sick. We can't educate youth if we're not going to look after human life first. And what many parents and teachers want to know now, what is the risk factor of reopening schools? Whether you're a staff, a teacher, or a student, if you get screened for your symptoms and your temperature, if people respect that, then I think the risk is low. Dr. Ruth Bergeron with UT Health believes it's possible for kids to safely return to the classroom. So since the onset of this whole pandemic, we've seen that children are less affected than adults in terms of the severity of the disease and the frequency of the disease. And so less than 2% of cases are in children. And there's really not been any documentation of child to child or child to adult transmission. Now, please understand that doesn't mean it can't happen. We're still studying this, but that's not the frequent way that adults become infected. She believes following these guidelines can slow the overall spread. What can parents do? Um, talk to the kids, um, break these behaviors down into understandable small sound bites that the kids can understand. Get them to say these things, I will keep six feet apart. I will cover my face. Help them understand that this is for everybody's benefit and it's not only the way that they keep themselves safe, but it's doing something for other people. And I think kids intuitively understand that and they embrace that. That's what's so refreshing about children. Texas Governor Greg Abbott's mandate on wearing masks in public only applies to kids older than 10 years old. 
But school districts have the option of asking all students and staff to wear masks. Masks can be very anxiety provoking. It is really important for parents to think of their children as individuals and not to assume that what suits one child might be the best decision for each of their children. Tammy Logsdon with the Children's Bereavement Center of South Texas says now parents are tasked with a big decision. Because school is important, their children's health and safety is critical, their family's health and safety is critical. So I think first of all, being forced to make a decision about whether or do whether I allow my children to go back to school in person or I take on the responsibility of schooling, helping my children do school at home. It's a huge anxiety provoking decision for families to make right now. And it's during a period of time where everybody is already a little stretched. TEA has outlined that parents will need to choose between in-class instruction or remote learning and may not be able to switch until the end of the grading period. There's absolutely no reason why we can't build flexibility into our school schedules. Um, we've just pulled off an incredible feat, which was taking school and turning it into an online practice in the, in the space of literally two weeks. Another concern, what to do when students and teachers start getting sick and those teachers need to quarantine. Amphlet says during the course of a normal school year, it's already a challenge to get substitute teachers. A lot of them are retired teachers and a lot of them are older. A lot of them are in risk categories for COVID-19. And the ones that I've spoken to don't have a lot of intention for coming back into the classroom in the fall. The guidelines require plenty of safety measures like sanitation stations in every classroom, supervised hand washing, and hiring more cleaning staff. But is that enough to reassure parents? We asked our viewers in a digital poll and 75% said no. They won't send their kids back to campus. So I think it's important for parents to think about what their individual child's needs are. Um, because that can really make a difference over the next four months. You know, I think if parents of children who have medical vulnerabilities, such as asthma, hypertension, obesity, or diabetes, if those parents are able to keep their kids in a remote learning situation, then I think we greatly reduce the harm that could come to our school children population. Have some conversation with the child about it. Does not mean that the child gets to make the decision. But it would be important to listen to what their concerns, their questions, their thoughts are. And then the parent assures them that they're going to make the best decision for them. Parents have a lot to consider between now and mid-August, and so do school administrators. TEA says districts are required to post their individual guidelines at least one week before the start of the semester. For this KSET TV Extra, I'm Stephanie Serna, KSET 12 News.